Well, what's going on, YouTubers? It's the Natural Born Thriller, and welcome everyone to Impact Wrestling Review, the show from um, August 25th, 2020. This will be the second event, the second show, the second part of Impact Emergence 2020. So let's get right into it, folks. We have Josh Matthews and Matt Serain, commentators for this show. So there we go. The opening match was one of Eddie Edwards' Impact World Championship Open Burial that he does. That's, that's what I'm calling it. And who was the feeling? Um, the, you know, the one to face Eddie Edwards? None other than a legendary ECW wrestler. No, not Tommy Dreamer. But Rob Van Dam. Being accompanied by his girlfriend, Kay Forbes. And Eddie Edwards wins. Not only Eddie Edwards beat RVD, but Eddie Edwards beat RVD clean. No hope of you know from Sammy Callahan. No distraction from Sammy Callahan. Nothing from Sammy Callahan whatsoever. RVD just lost to Eddie Edwards. Meanwhile, we had uh, Sammy Callahan versus Eddie Edwards. RVD got involved, you know, before the match started, beat up on Sammy Callahan. And that would lead to him losing against Eddie Edwards in the match. You know, because he wasn't 100% because of the beating that he suffered from, not just from RVD, but also from Kate Forbes. But it's okay for RVD to, um, to lose cleanly to Eddie Edwards. And on top of that, with the whole feud between RVD, Kate Forbes, uh, against Sammy Callahan, why was Sammy Callahan willing to do anything about it? Why couldn't they build more tensions between uh, this whole thing with RVD and Sam Callahan if it's going to lead to a match? Made no sense. So, yeah, that's basically what happened with that. After the match, Eric Young, the world-class maniac, attacks Eddie Edwards from behind. Beats him up. Basically, some no. You know, basically gives Eddie Edwards the answer. You know, it's on my time. And my time is... The next episode of Impact Wrestling will happen for the world title. And we'll get to it uh, more details of that later. We go to Wrestle House. One of my favorite things uh, to watch on Impact Wrestling. And basically preparing a toga party. I feel like it's WrestleMania 9 all over again. Even though I never watched WrestleMania 9 at the time. But, um... But that's basically what the theme was uh, for WrestleMania. Probably Heenan was in the toga. I think Gulo Gerard and Russell was in the toga in a way. Anyways, um, I remember, um, you know, people, um, you know, people that was look like, um, you know, back in the old days of, you know, during Julius Caesar's era, uh, they were in the toga, so. But anyways, <clears throat> point is, they're having a toga, a toga party. Everything hasn't been going well for Ty Valkyrie. As a result, she has a, a bit too much to drink. And meanwhile, Giant Swinger had an idea for him and Crazy Steve to score all the ladies. But when it doesn't uh, go according to plan, Tommy Dreamer announces match time. Since uh, Christian Steve is blind, which I didn't even know that was supposed to be a thing with Christian Steve that he's blind. He goes up against Giant Swinger. So we have Christian Steve versus Giant Swinger in the blindfold match. So they're wearing uh, black sheets, a black background or something like that. Yo, basically reminds me of J.T. Snake Roberts versus Rick Martel from WrestleMania... Which, which, which WrestleMania was? I don't think it was WrestleMania 6. It was probably WrestleMania 5, if I'm not mistaken. It might not even be WrestleMania 5. It probably was... WrestleMania 7? Maybe? Maybe? Maybe it was... Maybe. I don't know. Because I thought it was WrestleMania 4. Because WrestleMania 4 was during the time when they, um, 
with a, uh, this whole tournament thing. So, anyways, so the match happens. Didn't last long. Chris Steve wins. And the referee of the match, I forgot who it was. Anyways, moving on. And, and by the way, the loser of the match, too, by the way, has to uh, dress like the winner. Basically, since Josh Stringer lost, he's got to look at Chrissy Steve. So that'll be uh, on the next episode of Impact Wrestling for the next uh, review on my channel, or just to uh, re reviewing Impact Wrestling. <clears throat> A.I. was just hunting down Eric Young. I didn't care. Moving on. But Impact Wrestling is unplugging Bound for Glory. That'll be live on a Saturday on October 4th, 24th, excuse me, live on pay per view. While on a Saturday, maybe the least having a pay per view on, the, on, that, on that Sunday on the 25th of October. I don't know. You know, on the cell, maybe. Who knows? But that's my guess. But yeah, um, it's going to be kind of weird to watch Bound for Glory on a Saturday night. Just like how I felt it was kind of weird watching Semiversary on a Saturday night, too. For, for most of it, that scene. You know, after I was done with working. But, hey, uh, around this time, I'll, I won't be working. Um, You know, around this time of October, I won't be working anyways on that long. So, um, I'll be I'll be able to uh, watch it. So, it depends, you know, if we, if we don't stay up until October. Because I'm hearing that we're supposed to stay up until September. But we'll see. We shall see. Uh, Rhino tells fans to uh, get the hashtag he for impact to be trending on social media for management to agree to have Heath Ledger to be a tag team partner with Rhino going up against Reno Scum for the next Impact Wrestling show. So, uh, Eddie Edwards heads to the ring. He grants that Eric Young to face him right now. Just want to wait to next to, to the next episode of Impact Wrestling. See, Eri comes out. He says that his plan is by design uh, for that reason, and he won't be fighting Eddie Edwards on this episode. And Eddie Edwards basically, uh, you know, without warning, goes right after e because e was getting ready to leave. And basically, they start fighting on the stage, uh, start fighting into the ring. Uh, back, they start fighting back into the, onto the uh, outside of the ring. Uh, we had securities coming out. We had uh, Scott DeMoy coming out. Scott DeMoy was at one point was pushed down by Eddie Edwards. Um, you, um, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, yeah, and EY, um, may I take one shot to A. Edwards before he, 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 he had to out there, and that was it. So, yeah, um, Eric Young's making this work. Eddie Edwards, don't care. So, there you go. And it was just a matter of time of a, uh, EY, you know, to lose against Eddie Edwards. But that's something we're gonna um have to find out. You know, you're gonna find out later on when I do the that review. You know, later on in the week, basically. So one more, moment, folks. So next we get to um, yeah, uh GM Miller catches up with the new impact X Division champion in Re Rajul after that he stole the title from Chris Bay during the, the Chris Bay and TJP. Three way match uh, for the not you know I mean for the exhibition championship. Well, he uh, claims that he's going to give out what he never had, and that's opportunities. And yeah, he's going to be give opportunities to those that that wasn't was shot against him for the exhibition championship. So there you go. Not much to say about that. Master Ray hosts another exciting edition of Locker Room Talk. So she thought, and you know. And also, so so we thought. Our special guests were Dez and Wentz of the Rascals. But what she didn't uh, tell them was that she had two more guests in there as well. Ace Austin and Man Man Fulton. After the two um, almost got into a, a physical altercation, Master Rain wraps it up. And that was basically it for that one. So yeah, it was not so exciting at all. All this edition of locker room talk. We get the ICU hacker 
Sammy Callahan, who lays out the challenge to RVD for a match on the next episode of Impact Wrestling. Even though he could use this uh, promo to distract RVD during RVD's match against Eddie Edwards, where Eddie Edwards uh, blindsides him with a, you know, with a <clears throat> Boston knee party, and that could really uh, sub um, this whole uh, feud between RVD and Sam Callahan. Besides this whole Sam Callahan, you know, basically trolling himself by putting his own pit- his own head uh, attached his head picture onto the pictures. Of the body of uh, Katie Forbes. <clears throat> that was still stupid. Uh, EC3, he explains why he stole the TNA World Championship title from Moose. He recalls that the greatest moment of his career is when he beat Kurt Angle for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship in 2015. However, what he got uh, in return was pain. Suffering, misery, and all that, and, and basically, he threatened to destroy the TNA World Championship title belt. And you know, he let Moose know he wants his belt back, something like that. You know, he's got, um, you know, you know, he's gonna basically lay down a challenge in, in a way. So that's best. That was basically it on just that one. So yeah, um, this is on uh, turn, um, to a different meaning. Of EC3's character now. So we gotta see how that le- leads up to on the next episode of Impact Wrestling. Well, as I do that review uh, later in the week. Brian Myers versus Willie Mack. I barely uh, pay attention to the match because Brian Myers, who takes him seriously, and I'm not saying that I hate Brian Myers, I have no issues with Brian Myers, I just don't find him appealing. As a wrestler or as a character. I thought I did that for, for a while. But there's nothing. I I don't feel anything about Brian Myers. And to make the matter worse, he wins against William Mack. He beats William Mack. Someone that I do actually uh get behind. I got behind William Mack um as a as a wrestler and as a character. <laughs> But getting behind someone like a Brian Myers, who's been the jobber all these all these years in WWE, even when he um he's gone from WWE and he's um being Brian Myers, and I still have find any appeals of him as as um him being Brian Myers. I thought I would when he teamed up with Trevor Lee, who is now Cameron Grimes in NXT, and with him being a tag team champion with you know with Trevor Lee at the time in T- in TNA, you know the Global Force. Tag Team Champions, um, I believe they were. And then, you know, and, and, they, and they were Tag Team Champions in TNA. Uh, I, I, I recall they were Tag Team Champions in TNA. Don't, don't, you know, out of the, of the two, Trevor Lee was, I was more into Trevor Lee than I was to Brian Myers um, of, that, of that tag team. I don't, I don't really understand how they were even a tag team in the first place. And this was during a time when Trevor Lee was about, what, 20 years old? 20 or 21? Brian Myers sucks. I'm just saying that's this. He, uh, he I, I don't find him appealing because I think he sucks. Pretty sure he's a nice guy and everything, but there's no appeal of him. I, I, I find no appeal of him whatsoever. Heath wants everyone to put hashtag Heath for Impact to be trending for management to see it so that he could be allowed to be a tag team with Rhino against Reno Scum. So there you go. We go back to Russell House, and it's time for Rosemary to date Lawrence D. You know Larry D. Alicia uh, confronts her about you know about it and everything, uh, stating that there's something wrong, and try to make Johnny Bravo jealous. Tommy Dreamer uh inspires inspires uh Johnny Bravo to man up. He interrupts the date. Leading to a match between, you know, Lawrence D versus Johnny uh, Bravo. Match happens, and Lawrence D wins with a uh, a knockout punch. It was a quick match. 
Didn't even last five seconds. It might have, but who knows? It was a second. It was a, a, a couple of seconds match. Back to the match. I, I don't remember. I don't remember who's, who's referee, but I don't care. But uh, Johnny Bravo and Rosemary, you know, after the match was over, you know, admit that they have feelings for each other. Bravo breaks the news to Ty Valkyrie, who wasn't happy. Ty accused Rosemary for being jealous of her. Ty challenges Rosemary to a match on the next episode of Impact Wrestling. We're going to take all, including Johnny Bravo. Mayfair time. The Mayfair that I've been looking forward to watching, the, May the match that I was looking forward to watching was the first ever 30 minute knockouts Iron Man match for the Impact Knockouts Championship. Jordan Grace versus the Virtuosa, the Impact Knockouts Champion, the Iron Perazzo. And boy, this match was fantastic. It was great. I loved it. The best highlights on the show besides Russell House was this match. And also EY. Where it tends to be the bond and the awards. But besides that, this match alone was the highlight of the show. Deanna Perrazzo stomps uh, the hand and shoulder of Jordan Grace, targets the you know those areas that you know for ongoing match because her thing is that she's the submission specialist of the Fujiwara arm bar. Deanna Perrazzo with some series of short arm clotheslines. Deanna Perrazzo, uh, you know, takes some control. She tosses Jordan Grace to the floor. Uh, at this point, you know, zero to zero, you know, returns to uh, um, returns to um, falls. Deanna um does more damage to the hand of Jordan Grace, driving her uh into the steel steps uh, with a foot and everything. You know, stomping, you know, stomping it in the way, driving it. Grace uh creates some separation and a suplex off the second rope. Jordan Grace builds some momentum, some series of sentons. Grace puts Deanna Prosso to a sleeper and score the first fall. Um, where there are a, a mere minutes left in the match, but like about like somewhere from ten minutes, um, you know. Uh, around there, or maybe, or, or maybe it was um fifteen to ten minutes um um left for the other match where Dion Perazzo uh gave the um the fall to Jordan Grace. So the match continues after the uh, that fall. Match restarted. Dion um Perazzo uh floats over into a submission on her of her own on Grace, but Grace gets to the ropes. Grace drives uh her you know to the corner, but Dion Perazzo meets the referee, Brian. I mean Brandon. Brandon. Totally, I'm, I'm assuming that's his last name. As a, you know, basically using the, on the referee as a shield, hits Grace, oh, and then, then Joy Grace hits um Deion Prosser with the Grace driver, but referee wasn't available. Deion Prosser all of a sudden she grabs the knockoff title belt and clutches Jordan Grace with it, goes for the cover and gets the pin, and got a fall. So it's now one one, and one and one minute you know, and she got that. Fall and one minute left, um, before one minute left. So, Dark Prosso uh, goes for a German suplex, locks in the Fujiwara arm bar, and Jordan Grace, you know, was seconds, uh, was was seconds, <clears throat> was game with the ropes basically, but then, um, Dark Prosso, uh, you know, put more pressure, and I think she got both arms again in the way, and then, you know, again, Fujiwara arm bar, Jordan Grace taps out before, you know, seconds run, ran out. And your winner, still the knockouts champion, the virtuosa, Diana Perazzo. And also, and also, right choice, by the way, for Diana Perazzo to win. So, yes, Diana Perazzo is your winner, retaining the title, and I thought it was great. And that was your edition um, of the um, August 25th, 2020, of Impact Wrestling, where it to Impact Emergence 2020. Taught my wrestling were five matches. And my overall strength for the show. Um now more pertains to on the you know the, the, the first part of emergence for impact wrestling. I give it a seven and a half out of ten. 
Now I'm gonna change that into an eight and a half out of ten. As far as uh, the second one, part, part for uh, emergence for Impact Wrestling, this one gets the uh, this one's gonna have to get a seven and a half out of ten. Uh, I thought the first one was better. Even with, um, with this this great match that happened on the second one, um, this show to me it felt a little flat. Besides the main event, but the second the second uh, I mean, but the first event was was a better one than the second one. But either way, both shows I still enjoyed for us um, for what it was. And there you go. And that being said, thank you for watching for this natural born thriller saying peace on the streets. But this was your Impact Wrestling review. We're going to Impact Emergence Twenty Twenty. The second event, second part, second show of Impact Wrestling. For, you know, for Impact Emergence. The show from August 25th, 2020. Until next time, folks. Uh, which is um, what pertains to the Impact Wrestling show that I did watch this week. Which I'll give you this that review later on in the week. You all stay well, stay safe, take care of yourself and everything that's going on in the world. God bless. Love one another. Um, peace and harmony. Um, and there you go. I am out here. Ta-ta for now.